Okay. So thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, this will count towards your coach's training. Uh, so don't worry about that. Um, ask any questions you guys have throughout the um, presentation and we'll, I'll answer obviously whatever I can. Um, some of these, just a heads up. So these were created um, for individual skills. Uh, we have three levels that we're going over tonight. We have level three, which is for like three on three and low five on five. Um, and then we have level four, which is for the higher level teams um, in five on five. Unified and traditional can both do it. Partners can obviously do it as well. Um, and then we also have team skills, which are really, really cool, honestly. Um, but they're only used, can be used in phase two. Um, so that's the only downside, but I still wanted to put them in here so that you guys can see them if by chance we, you get to move to phase two. Um, it's with the indirect contact, we can't do that during phase one. So this gives us the option to add it to phase two. And Steve muted himself and can't unmute himself. And I don't know how to unmute you or how to let you unmute yourself. So whatever you did just worked. I think that was probably what you had an issue with there, Craig, too, didn't you? Yeah, oh, I just I had was. to unmute I you. Out. Okay. And that other individual isn't showing up on the board who you were waiting there on uh anger. I don't know if you admitted Bob Strauss, the only other one in here. Okay. Because he's not showing up. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and continue. Um, so we'll start with level three skills. So as I said, this is for five on five, low five on five, three on three. Um, you can really use your discretion um, to which level you want your athletes to do, um, but challenging them at the same time. So obviously phase one, um, it's all phase one appropriate. Uh, you have one player going at a time. And as I said, it's for three on three, five on five traditional and low five on five unified and traditional teams, MPD teams, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so we got, first one we got is hot shot shooting. Um, this is a half court. Um, typically in hot shot shooting, you have like seven different spots on the ground. We did it a little differently. I'm gonna go to the score. So this is a diagram inside the key is worth one point. So you can see the green box. Anything inside there is worth one point. Um, anything inside the three point line, but outside the key is worth two points. So it's not just those boxes, it's anywhere inside the three point line outside the key. Um, I couldn't really make diagrams like that. I tried, don't <laughs> believe me, I tried. Um, and then I would say anything outside the three point line is worth three points. So the athletes will have one minute to shoot from wherever they want as many shots as they can. Um, they only get points for made baskets, obviously, and they have to get their own rebound. Um, if you saw on the equipment, um, it says three basketballs. That is if the rebound goes too far, instead of having them chase it, they just get their own rebound. They can grab one of those balls. That's not if it goes right over their heads and they just don't feel like chasing it. This is if it literally will waste their time to go get it, they can grab this um, an extra ball. But obviously it has to be placed on the ground um, and you can decide where to put the balls. You can put one under the basket, one at the top of the key. You can put them on the sides, the wings, whatever you decide. Um, I'm not gonna say where you can put them and where you can't. You know your athletes and where they're gonna go, um, where the rebounds typically go anyway. But those extra basketballs are if they can't get to their rebound, they can grab one of them and keep going. But so the player, when you say go, shoots the basket, gets a rebound, goes to another spot, shoots, they continue shooting for two minutes. Um, this helps work on, you know, shooting from different spots, decision making on what shots they want to take, um, as well as rebounding. Um, a lot of courts have different three point lines now. Obviously, we have the um, high school three-point line. We have the men's college and the women's college and the NBA three. There's so many different three-pointers now. We will be using the high school three-point line, which is the one, you know, that attaches right to the top of the key. 
Um, to get the points, the athlete must dribble from spot to spot. They can't just pick it up and run. So once they get the rebound, they have to dribble to the next spot for it to count. Um, if they don't dribble to the next spot, if they just get it and run, that doesn't count. If they double dribble, um, that's okay. You can use your discretion for that. Um, but for, um, they just have to do some kind of dribbling. Um, I know a lot of our athletes can't dribble well. This gets them to practice their dribbling as well. Scoring, as I said, only final baskets, only baskets made count. Uh, one point inside the key, two outside the key inside the three-point line, and three points for the three-point line and beyond. Any questions on this one? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I think it's going to be a pretty fun one. They will be tired by the end of that minute, especially if they're uh, running all around crazy. I mean, you can have an athlete shooting layups and doing the mic and drill for a minute straight, and they could get more points than someone trying to make three-pointers. I know a lot of our athletes are probably going to go out to the three-point line just try to shoot them. I get it. You know what? That's okay. They can try. Um, they might not get as many points, but hey, they can try whatever they want. They can shoot from the same spot twice in a row. It doesn't matter. They can shoot from the same spot the entire time. Um, but as long as they're getting the rebound and shooting, that's the biggest thing. Okay. Uh, speed dribbling. Again, remember this is for three on three, so it's for the lower athletes. Um, they're just going down the court and back with their dominant hand. They get to pick what hand they want to use. Um, we said 75 feet, so you'll put a cone at the end of 75 feet. Just because all basketball courts are different sizes, not everyone's going to be using the same size court. So we don't want to say down and back on a full court because what does that mean? You could be practicing an elementary school gym where it's 80 feet, or you can be practicing a high school gym where it's 94, whatever. So we decided 75 feet. Um, so you'll just have to measure out, unfortunately, 75 feet. Um, they'll dribble down, dribble back. They have to go to a cone. Um, that's it. And it's going to be based off of the scoring. It's going to be based off of how fast they can complete it. We don't have those, um, the school scoring point system yet. Uh, this Saturday, I will be going to St. Mary's County and we will be, we have a couple athletes lined up that can go through all of these stations and we will be recording the stations so that we have video on them. I'll post them on the coaches resource page. Um, but this gives us the opportunity to test out different levels that will be coming um to get the scoring points uh set up so we have four or five athletes coming from st mary's on saturday um to go through all these stations so after that i will have the scoring um done with that and we have don bewick um that's going to be there as well don's part of my sports management team my assessment team every freaking assessment team and sports management team we have at special olympics pretty much um, he's going to be there helping me uh, run it and we'll come up with the scoring together um, as they go through it. Yeah, diagram, super simple. Run down 75 feet, run back 75 feet. Uh, time will stop when they cross the start line again. Um, and as I said, since it's three on three, we're allowing them to choose what hand they want to dribble with. Uh, whatever they feel better dribbling with, that's what they have to do. They just it's a speed dribble, so they're going down and back as fast as they can. Hey, Anger, on this one, it, um, the, the rules or whatever it says with their dominant hand, is there a purpose for them to use their dominant hand? Or if they use both hands, like crossover going down the court, would that be would that not count? Or It wouldn't count. They have to use one hand. Okay. Um, if they want to switch partway down, that's fine. But they can't dribble with both hands at the same time. They can't double yeah. dribble. Yeah, I was going to say, if they're using the right hand, you know, partway down, it gets a little off, and then they use the left hand to finish. But I think maybe we clarify that there just to yep. see one hand, you know, consistent dribble all the way down. But I can do that. Can you write and make a note for me? Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Okay. Layup drill. 
Um, this consists of 10 layups, five on each side. Um, we'll go to the diagram. The diagram makes it look a little crazy. So they'll start at the right elbow. Um, I think they can start either side. No, right elbow, just to make it consistent. They'll start at the right elbow where the cone is, dribble in, shoot a layup, get their rebound, dribble out to the left cone, dribble in on the left side, shoot a layup, and they'll do that 10 shots, not 10 makes, 10 shots. So they'll shoot 10 layups, dribbling back to the cone each time, rotating um, sides each time. So they'll alternate sides and scoring. I mean, it makes it pretty easy. Every made basket is two points and they get a bonus point if they shoot with the correct hand. So if they shoot with the right hand on the right side and the left hand on the left side, they can get an extra bonus point for those shots. So they can get up to three points per made basket. Um, if they miss the basket, but they shoot with the correct hand, they still get that bonus point because they did it correctly, they just missed. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Any questions? I mean, these are pretty simple. The three on three ones are a little bit more simple um, because it's for the lower athletes, um, but we wanted to make it, I think these are gonna be a little tougher because this one isn't timed, but it's still going to, be tiring because they're running back and forth 10 times from the elbow and shooting a layup. <clears throat> My lovely diagram. All right, target pass. Um, so we'll go to, diagram makes it a little bit easier to read and explain. So they'll start at the chest pass. The big cones that are in this diagram are like the inflatables we use for flag football. That's what we envision um, for this. So it's the inflatable, the big inflatable punching bag kind of things that pop back up um, when you punch them. So this, they do a chest pass. If they hit anywhere on the blow up, uh, uh, anywhere on the inflatable, before it hits the ground, they get points. Uh, we'll go over the points in a minute. Then they'll go to the bounce pass. It has to bounce only once before it hits the inflatable to get the points. So a bounce pass, obviously it can't bounce. If it bounces twice, they don't get any points for it. It just can only bounce once. Um, then they go to the overhead pass, which is just two hands over their head. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Hitting anywhere on the target before it hits the ground, they get points. Um, and then the baseball pass, which is literally just like it sounds, one hand pass to try to hit the target. Um, again, if it hits it before it hits the ground, they get points. Um, this is the distance from the cone, the start line to the target for all of them and the points that they can receive. Um, obviously the overhead and the baseball passes are a little bit more difficult because they are farther away, um, but it's, working on those techniques, stepping into the pass. Um, they have to stay behind the line. If they go over the line when passing it, then they have to, um, they don't get the points for it. Um, but it's just working on the pass, hitting the target. Um, you'll have a ball at each start line. This one's not timed. They only get one pass at each target. Um, they hit it, they get points, they don't, they just move on to the next one. So like I said, it's not timed, um, but it's- I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry. Um, it's not timed, but it's working on accuracy. Questions? All right. And I'll pass these out and post them online so that you guys can look at them again, obviously, as well. All right, the sprint and shuffle. So and this one, one is- question, Real quick. Yep. All this is all these drills are going to have to be done with just under the current condition stage one with just with just 10 people there right 10 people in the area. Correct. Um, According to your class, previous um, volunteers, coaches, everyone and athletes, um, 10 or less. Okay. Um, so the sprint and shuffle. 
So it's kind of, they're just doing a zigzag. They are going to start in the upper left hand corner of the, well, the left baseline corner. Sorry. Um, they will defense a slide across the baseline uh, or 35 feet. We gave you guys all the dimensions again, just like we did um, for this speed dribble, because obviously not all courts are the same. Um, so they'll defense a slide across the baseline or 35 feet. They will then sprint to the opposite half court, um, opposite corner and a half court, 45 feet, defensive slide across, sprint to the corner, finish at the opposite end. So they will finish um, at the complete opposite end of where they started. So it's just a defensive slide, sprint, defensive slide, sprint, defensive slide. Once they pass that finish line, the time will stop. They'll get points based off of how fast they went. Um, we'll get, again, the scoring opportunities. We'll get the scoring point system uh, done this weekend. So they will be ready for you guys when you start. Um, any questions? No? All right, dribble and score. I'm going to go to the, this makes it a little bit easier. So they'll start at the top of the key extended onto the sideline. They will dribble through four cones. So they actually have to dribble through these cones. Um, they don't have to do any moves. They just dribble through the cones, um, kind of in a zigzag pattern. And then they can shoot from the one point or two points. So it's either inside the key is one point or at the foul line is two points. Um, they get five turns to go through this whole system. So they'll zigzag through, get a shot, um, get their rebound, go through again. And they'll repeat it five times. Um, the amount of points they get is based off of the numbers of baskets they make from the certain areas. So again, they get to pick where they shoot from. So if they wanna shoot all from the foul line, they can shoot all from the foul line. That's the most points at two. There's no three point um, opportunity here. It's only one and two points. So they can, after they dribble through that last cone, they can go on for a layup and get one point. Um, or they can shoot from the two, wherever they want to shoot from in those designated areas, they get to pick. Um, like I said, after they get their shot, take their shot, they get their rebound and go again. So it's the total of five times through. Questions, good? Yeah, when we'll share the diagram real, real quick again, Anger. So I know, I know you mentioned, which is good clarification, there's no three point scoring here. Mm -hmm. um, if they're outside of those two boxes, but inside the, the three point line, is Doesn't it count. just within the key and just within, or just within the painted area and then just within the, the top of the foul line? Those are the two areas only? Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, and this is literally the two points is just the top of the key. So it's just the arc um, yep. for the foul line around the arc. That's the only two points, and then one point is anywhere inside the paint. Gotcha. Um, we wanted to keep this one a little bit more simple, so they only have the two options to shoot from. Um, one, it makes it a little bit sim more simple on you guys to keep the score, but um, we thought coming from that angle, we thought those would be the best spots to shoot from. So that's level three. Um, Bob, that will probably be for your five on five PDU team for those athletes. Um, it might be a challenge for some of them, but I think it will be good for them. Um, maybe some of your lower level team might need that as well. If you want to split your team, that's fine. Since it's individual skills, you get to pick and choose which ones do what. You don't have to base off this whole team can only do this. You have the discretion to pick which athletes do which level. Um, like I say, if you want to split the two teams, that's fine as well. Or split the team into two different levels, that's fine. They cannot, though, go from one level to the other and do half of level three, half level four. They have to do all of one or all of the other. Um, if you want to start them in one and then they are exceeding and doing really well and you want to move them into the next one, that's fine. Um, they don't have to stay in the one during the whole season. You want to start them at level three, then move them to level four. 
that's 100% fine. Um, not a big deal. I'll have score sheets and stuff just like I did for soccer and football um, that we can, that we'll use and stuff like that. You just move them on up and just make sure you let me know, obviously. So it's a little bit um, open to your judgment as coaches. You guys know your athletes better than anyone. So don't make it too easy on them, obviously. Want to challenge them. Um, but we thought these would be some good options since games can't happen. All right. So level four. These are a little trickier. Um, you'll see some of them are the same as level three, but add, with some stuff added onto it to make it a little bit more challenging. Um, but our team that created this had a great time creating these. That's for sure. Justin Hansinger was going crazy thinking of ideas. Um, Justin is an athlete from Montgomery County. He's our athlete rep on the basketball SMT. Um, so we really enjoy these. So I think you guys will too. Um, again, no indirect or direct contact during these. So this is all phase one appropriate. One player goes through at a time. Um, after one player goes, you need to disinfect the balls for the next player to go. All the phase one, um, everything in phase one applies. Hot shot shooting, same thing. So this one is literally the same thing as uh, level three. We didn't change it. This can be done in one or, or I'm sorry, in level um, three or four. So literally same thing, nothing changes. They can have one minute to shoot from any of the spots, getting their own rebounds, keep shooting for that full minute. Basket um, only counts for made baskets, or points only counts for made baskets, okay? Tony, um, sorry you just joined. We just went through the level three skills, which is probably what your team would do. Uh, but if you want to stay on at the end, then we can go through those again. We just started level four. Okay, level three, okay. Yeah. yeah, most likely your team will be level three skills, but look at these and see what you think. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to just go grab something to eat real quick yep. and I'll be back. There we go. Okay, sorry. Couldn't get through the next one. Okay. Cone dribble and shoot. So this is kind of like the dribble and shoot from level three, um, but the cones are set up differently. As you can see, they're set up around the three-point line. Uh, so they had to zigzag around the three-point line, and then they shoot from one of the two designated areas. Um, they have one minute to go through these. So it's not like level three where you had five shots or five turns through. They get one minute to go through as many times as they can. Um, if they're smart and they want to guarantee points, they just keep shooting layups for a minute. They shoot a layup, go through again, shoot a layup, because it's almost a guaranteed basket. Well, it's the easiest basket. Um, but like I said, they get one minute to go through, and um, look, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, once the player passes through the cones, they'll turn to the basket and shoot in the two areas. Um, they only get one attempt at a shot before they have to go back through the cones. So they shoot one, they miss it. They have to go back through the cones before they can shoot again. Um, they have to get their rebound after each time and they keep going until the time is up. Um, zigzagging through the cones, if they miss a cone, they have to start over. I'll put that, make sure that gets put in there as well. Um, but they have to zigzag through all the cones around the three point line. So it's just a different angle, which makes it a little bit more difficult, uh, which is why we changed it for this, for level four instead of level three. Um, and we changed it again, as I said, to one minute to make as many as they can instead of the five. Questions? I'm going through these a little fast. If you need me to slow down, please tell me to. Um, you guys don't have any questions, so I'm just gonna keep going. All right, so speed dribble. Same thing as um, level three, except that they have to go down with their right hand and back with their left. So this one, the level three, they got to choose which hand to go through. 
or go down and back with this one, they must go down with their right hand and must come back with their left. Um, we say right down and back or left back um, to make it consistent for everyone. Um, instead of saying dominant and non-dominant, we just made it easy, consistent. You have to go start with your right hand. Once you go down to the cone, you come back with your left hand. Um, again, the cone distance is 75 feet, just like the other one. So it's just a little step up from um, level three where they're using both hands this time instead of just one. And again, we'll get the scoring times uh, this weekend, we have one of our athletes, uh, Rata Maddox, who is one of the fastest people I've ever met. Um, he's a speedy guy. So he'll be going through this and he'll set the bar at the high points end. And then we'll work our way back down from there. Um, but it's going to be good. And I'll have that um, after this weekend. Again, dribble the right, back with the left. Lovely diagrams. All right, target pass, same thing. This one didn't change. Um, the only thing that changed is the distance from the cone and the target. So the line that the cones of the line that they'll be passing from to the target, that's the only thing that changed. Um, chest pass is 15 instead of 10. Chest pass and bounce pass, sorry, are now 15 feet instead of 10 feet. Um, the overhead pass is now 20 instead of 15. And the baseball pass is 40 instead of, I think it was 25. Um, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, they had to really have their accuracy, but we want to make it obviously a little bit more challenging being um, the level four skills. And again, same thing as um, in level three, you have to hit it before it hits the ground. Uh, bounce pass, they get one bounce for it hitting the ground before it has to hit the target. If they go over the line or miss the target, no points, they just automatically move on to the next one with one attempt at each target. Okay, uh, footwork and agility. So it's the same thing, except we added um, a suicide at the end. So we call it a ladder in the instructions because we thought calling it a suicide in the instructions might be bad. Uh, but everyone knows these as suicides. So they'll start in the bottom corner, just like level three, defensive slide 35 feet, sprint 45 to the opposite corner, um, half court, defensive slide across half court with or 35 feet, sprint to the opposite corner, defensive slide to the finish line. From the finish line, they run, I, my lines make this look really bad. <laughs> Steve made me add the lines, so blaming him. Um, so they'll start at the baseline, run to foul line extended, back, half court, back, uh, other foul line extended, back, full court, back. Once they finish that last sprint, that's when the time stops. Um, we have, as you can see, 15 feet and back, 35 feet and back, 45 feet and back, 70 feet and back. So it might not be full court. Uh, but you'll have to have a cone at each of these marks for the latter portion of it, which is at the end. So the diagram makes it look really crazy um, because there are so many lines. Um, I'm going to figure out a way to make this look a little bit better. Um, but it's literally just they're going through the zigzag. And then once they hit that um, finish line, they go through the suicide. Once they finish that suicide, they're done. Any questions? And again, before I put it, to make sure it's a little bit better. Go ahead, Craig. Do, do they need to touch the line with their hand or is just running over it with their foot suffice? I'm fine with them just hitting it with their foot. But, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm 6'4". I hate it when my coach told me I hit it hit the ground. That's a long way to bend down. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have some tall athletes. I'm fine as long as they actually hit the line or go past it. I'm good with it counting. Um, and the cone, as long as they hit it with their foot, that's fine. All right. Offensive putback. We we're trying to figure out a name for this. We didn't know what to pick it. So we just named it offensive putback. So the player will start at the top of the key. 
they will dribble in to some cones or a line, whatever you want to put on the ground. Um, they throw it off the backboard, get their rebound, put it back up. So it's like they're getting an offensive rebound and then going back up with it. Um, so here's a diagram. They'll start up here at the top of the key, dribble in, pass it off the backboard themselves, get the rebound, shoot it. Okay. Once they um, they get one attempt, if they miss that shot, they have to clear the ball again. So clearing the ball, they just have to go to the foul line. So once I make that my one shot, I get my rebound, dribble to the foul line, go back in, bounce off the backboard, put it back in, or attempt to put it in. They repeat this as many times as they can in one minute. So again, this is working on um, offensive rebounds, putbacks, dribbling, and their stamina. They're going to be tired after doing all these. I'm tired just reading all of them because, I mean, everything in level four is pretty much timed. They have one minute to do this. Um, scoring, they get one point for every made basket and one point for every clean rebound if they get the rebound before it hits the ground. And that is when the rebound, when they throw it off the backboard and catch it, that's the rebound that we're talking about. After they shoot it, that's not a rebound. That's not what we're considering a rebound for scoring. Does that make sense? So only the putback, once they bounce it off the backboard, that counts as the rebound. Okay. So again, a lot of running. Start at the top of the key when you say go, run into the cones or the line, whatever you have on the ground, bounce it off, shoot it, get the rebound, shoot it, run to the foul line to clear it, back to the cones, and keep repeating for that one minute. And that's level four skills. This might not take as long as I thought because you guys don't have any questions. Do all these make sense? Yeah. For that last one, are they allowed to dribble after they get the initial rebound off the backboard or? When they get they the initial, once they throw it off the backboard, there's Ooh. no dribbling. They just put it back up. Put it back up. Okay. Yeah. So they can like jump to it and land and um, they can jump in front of the line to catch the rebound. Mm -hmm. They just have to be behind the line when they throw the right. ball off the backboard. Okay. So they have to shoot from that line. They can throw it off the backboard, jump in get it, shoot a layup. Um, the line will be about three feet from the middle of the, underneath the basket, three feet out. Okay. Do all those make sense? Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good question. I think that was Craig that asked that question. Cause if yeah. you, knowing some of the athletes and, and not athletes, if you will, when you do that initial throw off the backboard and you're unable to get a clean rebound, um, you know, if it hits the rim and goes 20 feet away, um, you're not going to be able to dribble. Or you're not they can dribble. If they want to put one dribble in and shoot it, that's fine. We're not going to take points off for that. It still counts if they make the basket. Um, it's We're not saying they can't dribble, but we're not saying they have to dribble. Gotcha. If that makes sense. It's up to the athlete what they feel comfortable with. I, as a coach, hate it when my girls are right under the basket or that close to the basket and they take a dribble before they put it back up when they can easily just go up. So this kind of drill helps them break that habit of having to put the ball on the ground. This drill is more intended to keep the ball high when they get the rebound and just put it right back up. Um, working on keeping it high, keeping it strong, um, not as much bringing it down where other people can get it. That was my biggest pet peeve when my girls get the ball and they're like six three and they bring the ball down to these where these little girls can touch it and grab it and then they can't shoot and score when they could easily just catch it above their head, put it right back up. <clears throat> so this is trying to work on that. Um, but if they want to dribble, that's up to you guys. But we're not going to penalize them for taking any dribbles. All right, so level five skills. So these are all team skills where um, we have a 5A and a 5B. 
I guess you can call it. So we have a three on three division and we have a five on five division. Um, these are only able to be done in phase two. You cannot do these if your area program is still in phase one because it involves multiple people on the court at a time and it involves passing to each other. And obviously passing is indirect contact. Phase one, indirect contact is not allowed. Phase two, you can't have direct contact, but you can have indirect contact. Um, so these can only be done in phase two. All right, so three on three. My lovely key, my diagrams are a little bit more in depth with this one because there's multiple people on the court. Um, I'll try to go through these as easy as I can um, and try to explain them. Please, please, please ask questions. I don't know if or when you guys are able to do these team skills, but I want to have them just in case. Um, and the team skills were made to make it a little bit more fun to have that team atmosphere. I mean, you play a team sport like basketball, you want your teammates on the court with you. You don't want to do individual skills. And I get that. I wouldn't want to either. But <clears throat> in these situations, we have to. So we have these so that you can still have the three on three skills, or I'm sorry, the team cohesiveness um, going through these stations in game like scenarios, I guess you could say. Um, most of these, we do not have scoring, the scoring set yet, because again, we needed to see it done in person, but with all of our area programs in phase one, that's not able, we're not able to do that. Once we can get a program into phase two um, safely, then we will switch it over and some of the athletes and we'll get some of these scoring opportunities complete. All right. Um, first one is passing. So athlete stands at half court, they're starting at half court line um, with at the middle of the line. So it's just passing. You have all three starting at half court. I apologize. All three starting at half court. The middle athlete has the ball. That middle person passes it to one side. That person passes it back to the middle. They pass it to the other side, pass it back to the middle. This whole time they're moving forward down the court. Um, so for these three on three team skills, excuse me, three on three team skills, everything is done in half court. Since three on three is done half court, um, we did all these team skills within the half court setting. So they pass it back and forth through the whole, all the way down the court. Once they get to the right in front of the foul line, the middle person will have the ball. They finish with it. They shoot um, from the middle of the key. There's two basketballs. You can see basketballs waiting for the outside players. Um, this player pick up this basketball and shoot. This player pick up this basketball and shoot. Um, one point for every good pass. A good pass consists of um, catching a clean catch and a clean pass. So if I pass it to Bob, but it's a bad pass, that does not count for the bonus point. It has to be a clean pass and a clean catch. So they can get a lot of points on this, um, a lot of extra points. And then they get two points for every made basket. So they can get up to six points in made baskets, plus however many points they get for um, the good passes and catches. And Does that make sense? So it's just, you're starting to have court, passing back and forth. The middle person is always getting the ball back. So it's like three-man weave, but they're not moving, uh, not moving around each other. They're staying straight ahead. Hey, Anger, is the intent on this one, and, and maybe it's in the uh, description there, but is this just chest passes or can these be bounce passes? They can be chest or bounce. Uh -huh. We didn't want to specify whatever um, they want to do. Chest uh -huh. or pass. Chest or bounce. Um, most likely it's going to be a chest pass just because that's typically what kind of passes they do, but it can be either or. We're not going to um, specify which one. So you have the two extra balls at the bottom. Um, and I will put 
how far, where to put the basketballs. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have that in here yet. Um, <clears throat> any questions? So this gives opportunity for everyone to touch the ball and pass, and everyone gets a shot. Melissa, Bob. Yes, Bob. Do, do the um, outside um, passers have to shoot their basketball from where the basketball is, or can they run in onto the basket and shoot? They're going to shoot from where the basketball is. This makes it look a lot farther than it actually is. I mean, the, the basketball will be placed right outside the – um key pretty much um so it's not going to be a far shot but we wanted to be a short jump shot not a layup got it um next one spot shooting uh, my team that i used to coach calls this maryland shooting how many shots is it first before i go okay um Uh, okay, so there's three spots that they will shoot from as a team. They'll start at the bottom elbow, or I'm sorry, bottom block. Three people on the court at a time. Two basketballs, as you can see in the diagram. They have to make as a team five shots from that first spot. And again, I'll put distances um, on here. I don't have those, but I will uh, make distances and create put that on there as well. So they shoot and make five from the elbow. I'm sorry, five from the block. Can't talk tonight. Um, they'll shoot and make five from the block as a team. It's not each person making five. It's the three of them combined. Once they make five as a team, they move to the center of the key where they have to make five again at spot number two. Um, make five as a team. They're getting their own rebounds, passing it to the back of the line. <coughs> Sorry. Then they move to spot number three, which is the opposite elbow from where they started. And they had to make three as a team. Um, because it's a little bit farther back, we changed it to they only had to make three from that spot uh, instead of five like the other spots. Um, and then once they finish, we're going to have this as a timed event. Um, if you finish within this amount of time, you get this point, stuff like that. But obviously we can't set those times until we see it done in person. Does everyone understand this drill? It makes sense? Okay. Um, the next station for three on three team skills is the pass and cut. Um, player one, Starts with it um, in the on the foul line extended outside the three point line. They will chest pass it to player number two who's standing in the middle of the foul line. Player three is starting in the corner um, of the baseline. When player two catches the ball, player two will bounce pass it to player three who is running in to shoot a layup. So it's player one, chest passes to player two. Player two, bounce passes to player three, who is going in for a layup. Okay, so it's just working on movement, different passes. Once player three shoots the ball, they only get one shot at this. If they miss their shot, they just keep moving on. They, once they get their shot, everyone rotates. So player one will go where player two is. Player two will go where player three is. Player three will be at the beginning where player one was. And they go through this again. So player three will pass to player one with a chest pass. Player one bounce passes to player two going in for a layup. They, again, player two will get the rebound, place player three who's now at the middle of the foul line, player one is in the corner and they go again. So everyone is gonna be in every position um, and they go through, it's working on passing, it's working on cutting and layups. So they get one point for every successful pass. And again, successful pass means a good pass and a clean catch from the receiver. And they get two points for every basket made, every layup made. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, there's no no clarification needed here for a layup, meaning that it goes off the backboard. It's just, I mean, you could do a little finger roll type of thing there too, if you could, correct? Yeah, I mean, layup, obviously just layup, meaning they have to be right next to the basket. Yep. No drills, short jump shots, layup. If they don't use the backboard, they don't use the backboard. Yeah. Less percentage of making it, but <laughs> right. that's okay. Gotcha. Um, so it's just, again, working on passing and cutting and layups. So there's no dribbling in this. They had to bounce pass it to the player. Right when the player catches it, they shoot the layup. Okay. Okay, dribble relay. This is probably going to be the funnest one for the athletes because I know everyone likes to do these kind of dribble layups or dribble relays. Um, all the athletes are lined up on the baseline. There's only one ball. Only the athlete, the first athlete up has the ball. One at a time, they dribble to half court and back. Um, when they get back to the baseline, they hand off to the next um, athlete in line. They dribble down and back and they keep repeating. They can dribble with either hand. Um, Either hand that they prefer, whatever their dominant hand is, they can go down one hand, back with the other, that's fine. This is just working on, excuse me, dribbling to half court, dribbling back, next person going back. Once player three uh, crosses the baseline, um, time will stop. And again, this is a timed event. We'll work on getting the scoring done when we're able to get through it, uh, get athletes to go through this for us. Pretty simple again, keeping a half court because it's for the three on three athletes. So keeping a half court to make it um, in their game scenarios. So those are the level three skills. I'm sorry, team skills for three on three. Sorry. Any questions on any of those? I know you guys are all five on five coaches, but still good to go through some of these. Yeah, on that last one, Anger, um, I know you said it's no no dribbling. Um, the person who's running in for the layup, pl the player three spot who's cutting into the paint. Oh, for the pass and cut? Yeah. Um, they're not supposed to dribble, but if they get the pass outside, can they take one or two dribbles to do the layup, or is it? Yeah, we're not going to penalize them if they have to take one or two dribbles. We want okay. the passer to practice passing it close to the basket. Um, but if they had to take one or two dribbles because they're too far away, that's fine. Okay, cool. Sorry, I'm writing down everyone's names so I don't forget to give you guys credit for being here. Okay. Five and five team skills. This is what you guys want to see. We had a lot of fun making these, I'm not going to lie. So I created these with um, a member of my assessment team, Emily Russo, who I used to coach, which makes me feel old because she's 25 now. Um, Emily played at Glenelg High School in Howard County, where she was all American, all conference, all everything, because she's just good. Um, and she got a full ride to UMBC. Um, after she played at UMBC, and even while she was playing at UMBC, she actually came back to help me coach my team um, because, you know, I'm not a guard. So she helped with the dribbling and teaching the guard how to dribble because I take my one or two dribbles and I'm done <laughs> when I played. So she helped with that. Um, amazing person. Um, you've probably seen her around. She's volunteered a bunch of times. Um, she's awesome. But so she helped me create all these team skills. Um, let me tell you, she had the best time creating them. She had so many ideas, I had to cut her off because we were getting to too many. So we'll go through these. Um, same thing, can only be done in phase two. These cannot 100% be done under any circumstances in phase one because of the indirect contact. Um, you will have five athletes on the court, or I'm sorry, five participants on the court at one time. If you are a traditional team, you have five athletes. If you're a unified team, you can have three athletes and two unified partners, which just like a game. Um, so like for Bob and Craig, you guys are unified. You can have two unified partners on the court um, with the three athletes, just like you would in a game. So it gives them that unified aspect still. Okay, and this is a mixture. Some of them are full court, some of them are half court. So it kind of mixes it up. Yeah, just, again, just 
just for the good of the group, um, I think everyone knows this, but just to make sure we state it is uh, going from phase one or by chance if we end up in phase Z because of any spikes that occur, uh, always check with your county leadership, your area or county director before moving from a phase one to a phase two. Um, they have to be in the loop and they have to give the blessing, if you will, uh, to move from the different phases uh, working with the state office. So I just want to make sure that uh, we do state that. Yeah. And it's not my decision. It's not your decision. It's based on a bunch of stuff, um, number of cases, number of new cases, whether you're in the red, orange, green, all the different colors. Um, so we have no say in what level you are in. It's based on, like I said, the number of cases you guys have in your area and this whole chart that was created from Harvard. And so you may want to move to phase two, but you may not be allowed to. Um, like Steve said, work with your area leadership to see if you're able to be in phase two or not. Um, I don't see these happening for a while. I hope they happen during the season, but I'm not obviously sure yet. Uh, but again, like Steve said, work with your area leadership. Don't just assume, oh, I want to go to phase two, so we're going to. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. You have to contact with your area leadership. Quick, quick question, Melissa. Yep. Can um for unify partners can we well even for five on five uh pdu can we put out four athletes i know i asked that question last year and one partner well hold, let me stop you in pdu what is the ratio of athletes and partners athletes and mentors we've had this discussion because you keep trying to change it on me and it doesn't it's not going to happen i know okay then the other part, can can the coach this year act as a unified partner since we're... If you make your team a unified team, they, they have to be in the same age range and the same skill. Um, for PDU teams, if you can't do five-on-five five traditional, I would go down to the three-on-three three team skills. Mentors cannot do these team skills because okay. there's scoring involved, there's other stuff that they're not allowed to do in typical games. Um, <clears throat> so for your athletes, I would say move down to the three on three team skills, unless they are unified partners and full unified partners. So you have a young team, so your partners have to be in that same age bracket as your athletes and same skill level as your athletes. Right, yeah. So you, can't, you can't be a partner, Dwayne can't be a partner. A coach cannot be a partner in these five on five team skills. Okay. 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 All right. All right. So spot shot shooting, same as the three on three, but it moves to seven baskets made, seven baskets made, five baskets made. And we changed the spots. So we made it a little bit more difficult. So two basketballs still, five players on the court. Um, either unified or traditional, whatever your team is, you get five, you have to make seven shots from the block as a team, again, not individually, as a team. So if one person, you keep going around the circle and only one person is making those shots, they shoot it, get the rebound, pass the next person in line, go to the end of the line. So they're just rotating in a circle until seven shots are made. Then they move to spot two, which is the opposite elbow. Again, as a team, they have to make seven shots or seven baskets. I get my shot, I shoot it, I make or miss, I get my rebound, pass it to the next person in the line, go to the end of the line. Then they had to move to three-point shots. So obviously we made this a little bit more difficult where they had to make five three-point shots um, as a team. So again, if you have one good uh, three-point shooter, they might make all their shots, but you have to rotate. Everyone has to be shooting. You can't just have your best shooter shooting them. Everyone has to shoot. Um, once the five shots from spot three are made, time stops. Um, again, we don't have the scoring because we haven't been able to see it done yet. But once we get that done, we will um, I'll let everyone know. Any questions on this? And the three-point shots have to be from the top of the key. So it has to be bottom right side block, opposite left elbow, and then top of the key for these shots. 
Okay. Pass and cut. So it's like the same pass and cut as um, in the three on three team skills, but we're adding it in. There's five people on this on the court now. So player one dribbles through, zigzags through five cones where they chest pass to player two, who is at the foul line extended on the wing, um, who then chest passes to player three at the top of the key. Chest passes to player four at the elbow, where player five cuts in for the basket and player four bounce passes it to player five for the layup. Same thing, then they rotate. So they're whoever they pass it to, that's what spot they're filling to make it a little bit easier. Um, so it's a little bit more involved because there's more people. Um, and we added the dribbling in to make it a little bit more difficult for the five on five teams. Um, but so they're gonna go through this course, I guess you can call it five times so that everyone shoots a layup. Once player one shoots a layup, then they're done. They get one point for a successful pass. Again, a successful pass is a clean catch, good pass and a clean catch from the receiver um, and two points for every made layup. So they can get up to 10 points for made baskets and countless points for successful passes. Any questions? Pretty simple, um, just going through, making sure they are in the right spots. Best thing to do is probably put either an X on the ground or a cone on the ground at each spot so that the athlete knows where to go. Um, and the big thing is to make sure player five or whoever's in the corner at the time stays in the corner until player four catches the ball. So they can't be waiting at the block for player four to catch the ball. We want to work on cutting and passing at the same time. So it's working on that timing as a team. Okay. Um, dribble. It's supposed to be dribble relay. Um, this one's going to be fun. You as a coach can pick who is doing which of these sections. Okay. So player one zigzags through the cones where they do, um, they just zigzag through the cones from the block to half court, um, which will be the 35 feet. We'll keep that consistent with the individual skills. Oops, wrong way. Player two will do a crossover move at each cone. So they'll dribble up to the cones with their right hand, cross over to their left, dribble to the next cone, cross over to the right, dribble to the next cone, cross over. They'll do that at all four cones. Um, They'll then pass the ball to player three, who is doing a double crossover. So they will take two dribbles, crossover, two dribbles, crossover. So they're not crossing over at the cones. It's more crossing over um, after two dribbles. So they're staying low, dribble, dribble, cross, dribble, dribble, crossover, and they're doing that all the way to the baseline, which again, 35 feet. Um, player four does a walking figure eight across the baseline. So I can't demonstrate this for you because I am horrible at this. Um, it's pretty much they're making a figure eight pattern. They're going in between their legs, but the ball is not touching the ground. So as they're walking, they're they're, the ball is going between their legs. Does everyone understand that? Does that make sense? To everyone, um, I will try to find a video. I don't want to. Um, Bob, you're shaking your head no. So I know they're they're walking down the court, basically going like this with the ball. Yeah, but down they're walking the ground. Forward across the baseline. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, no problem with the demonstration. You'll get a bill now. <laughs> Can't wait. We'll go in the trash. So. That person needs to be able to control the ball. So this player four is more working on ball handling instead of dribbling. Um, so they'll do the walking figure eight across the whole baseline. Player five will be in the corner and they sprint to the opposite basket for a layup. Once they shoot the layup, time stops. And this is a timed event. 
So again, we don't have the scoring, but it's a timed event. Um, and they will get two bonus points if they make the layup on the first shot. They only get one shot at the basket, but they will get two bonus points added to their score if they make the layup. They can shoot from either side. Obviously, it's better to shoot from the left side because that's what side they're going to be coming from. Um, but if they want to go across the basket to shoot on the right side and have a weird angle, go for it. Um, it'll just take more time. Does that make sense? Any questions on this one? Again, this one's a little bit more challenging, um, which is why we have it in the level five, um, five on five team skills. And as I said, you get to pick who does which um, leg of the race. So player one is would be your um, player that doesn't dribble as well because they're just zigzagging through the cones. Player two is probably the next lowest, um, and so on. So you get to pick which who does which. They only go through this once. So it's not like they have to switch spots and everyone goes through each of them. They're only going through this once. So once they're done their part, they're just waiting for their teammates to finish as well. Okay. So these next two are create your own. So we thought these will be fun so that you and your team get to create the type of individuals, the type of team skills that you want to do. So it's like you're creating your own play. Um, the only thing that we say is you have to have all of the below incorporated in this uh, team skill for it to count. We're still working on scoring. Not really sure how we're going to score it, but we'll work on it. Um, so you have to have a V cut. You have to have a backdoor cut. You have to have a chest pass, a bounce pass. The ball has to be on both the right side and you have to use both sides, at least once on each side. Um, so if you wanna do everything on the right side and shoot from the left side, that works. But the ball has to, you, you have to use both sides of the court, both left and right wing of the court um, and a layup. So as I said, you can create this however you want, as long as all five players are involved in it. You can have you can add more to it if you want, um, but you have to have these six skills in um, your station um, for it to count. Again, scoring we're still trying to figure that out. Not really sure how we're going to score it yet. Um, we have to see it. I think we'll probably get bonus points for each um, thing that you add in it. Uh, but we'll figure that out and I'll let everyone know. Any questions on that? No? Okay. So that was half court. This one is only done in a half court scenario. This next create your own is full court. So you have to somehow incorporate these four skills in a full court scenario. So you have to have someone zigzagging through six cones. You have to have an overhead or a baseball pass, whichever one you prefer. You have to have a shot from the elbow and you have to have a give and go. Everyone know what all of these mean? So give and go obviously is gonna be a layup. Um, so this one's gonna include two shots. Um, so like this, you can do, you can start with everyone on the one side, do a give and go with two players, have someone get the rebound, overhead pass down the court for a shot from the elbow on the opposite side. That's the full court. You have to use the full court. Oh, and zigzag through the code. Um, you have to use the full court in this um, skill or in this station, but you get to create how you do this. So you get to be creative, your team gets to be creative with it. However you want to make it look, that's on you. Um, any questions? Steve, you'll yeah, go Bob Signer, uh, you can give a question, uh, please. What was that? I was gonna say, this is the one where you get up and give a demonstration. Uh, okay. <laughs> 
No, I, I do say um, if you're not speaking, if everyone could go on mute, there is a little background noise we're getting just for the sake of the recording. Uh, that'd be great, unless you have a question or um, whatever. Let's everybody go on mute and then unmute ourselves as we have questions. Thank you. All right, everyone good on this one? I like these create your own because I think they're really fun and gives you guys that creative outlet that you get to do. Like instead of creating the plays, you're creating these skills. So I think these are kind of fun. Um, one thing to add to this one is it has to be a full court, uh, but I'll make sure that gets added to it as well. Okay. This one's a little bit difficult. Uh, it's, it looks very confusing, but I promise it's not, okay? So you have players one and two in the corners, players three, four, and five. So you're lined up like a five-man weave. I don't know if any of you guys have ever done five-man weave. So you have the two in the corners, and then you have the three-man weave set up in the middle. Um, the passing is the same as the passing from the three on three team skills, where player four is always going to get the ball. So they pass it to the one side, they get it back, they pass it to the other side, they get it back. Only those three players are doing the passing. Okay. Player one and two are dribbling down the sideline. Okay. Till they get to, um, the foul line extended area of the court, but they're just dribbling down. And then they're going to wait for players three, four, and five to get back down. When they get to the foul line, after they do all the passes, get into the foul line, player four is going to shoot from the foul line. Player one passes the ball to player three for a shot. Player two passes the ball to player five for a shot. So from the elbow, kind of extend it out a little bit so that you, you know, we got to keep social distancing still. Um, so they're going to be about foul line extended inside the three-point line for players three and five shot. Then player one and two are going to go to the baseline, which there's going to be two ball, one ball waiting for each of them. They're going to pick up the ball from the um, baseline at the three-point line, pivot towards the basket. They only get one dribble. After they take one dribble towards the basket, they do a jump shot. Um, scoring on this, most likely it's just gonna be made baskets, but again, we wanna check um, and see it done before we confirm the scoring. Um, but everyone in this gets a shot and everyone gets to work on passing, whether it's one pass or two or 10. Um, in this drill, you probably want your best passers at three, four and five because they're doing the most passing and your best dribblers at one and two, because they're dribbling down the court. And then they're only making the one pass to the person, their person closest to them. Uh, but everyone gets a shot in this drill. Does this make sense? Any questions on this one? Yeah, Anger, if you could go, go back to the explanations, it may, may be in there. Here again, can it be a bounce pass or a chess pass with players three, four? It can be either one. Two, three, or four, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, it doesn't matter which passes they use. Um, most likely there's going to be a chess pass because of how they're going down the court um, because they have to pass. They can't travel obviously. So you can't just pick it up and run with it. Um, it's like three man weave where you catch it and pass it again right away. Um, but player four, just make sure they're ready for the passes because they're going to come back quick. So they player four passes to one side, they get it back. They pass it to the other side, get it back. Um, typically how this drill is done is players three and five are defensive sliding while they're passing and player four is also defensive sliding, but they have to turn each time. We're not going to make you, your athletes do that because I've seen too many people fall. So they can defensive slide, they can run. That's fine. As long as they're not traveling and they don't dribble players, three, four, and five have zero dribbles at all. Okay, once they get the ball, they're to the correct spots for shooting. They don't dribble, they just get it and shoot. The only people dribbling are players one and two, um, where they take the one dribble after they pick up the ball and pivot, they take the one dribble for a jump shot. And I know um, you guys are still working on this as far as the scoring um, points there, but 
is one of the things that may be considered is like you said, no traveling in the in the three person, two, three, four going down. And then I'd say that's also going to be the same situation for players one and five dribbling all the way down, no traveling. So yep. could there be penalty points taken away or something? There's a very good possibility that there's going to be penalties like minus a point for every travel or yeah. um, for the players one and two, a minus a point for every double dribble because we want to make sure they're focusing on correct dribbling um, habits and stuff like that since it is five on five. They should yeah. know that stuff and they should be able to dribble one hand in and they can pick whatever hand they want to dribble with. They don't have to um, do one hand or the other. They get to pick. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yep. And you want players one and two to be your best shooters because they're going to be shooting from a little bit farther out than players uh, three, four, and five who are shooting from the elbows and the foul line. Okay. Dribble relay. Okay. So player one will dribble to the opposite. So you'll have players, you can see players one, three, and five on one side of the court, players two and four on the other side of the court. Okay. So they're only dribbling down to one side. Player five will dribble both sides. They'll go full court and back. So you want the person that has the, the best dribbler to go down and back as player five, most likely. So player one will dribble down and do a single crossover at each cone. So you can see there's a cone at the foul line, half court, foul line, opposite foul line. So they're gonna do, player one will do a crossover at each cone, just like the dribble relay was, or um, uh, the dribble, whatever the other dribbling one was, I think it was just called dribble, which I need to change the name of. Um, and they're all gonna be in, on top of each other, obviously, like they're all gonna use the same cones. I just spread it out so that you could see. Uh, but player one will do a single crossover at each cone. Player two, once player one passes the opposite baseline, player two will start and they will do a double crossover at each cone. So they'll dribble up to the cone, do a crossover and then automatically do another crossover back to their dominant hand, dribble up to the next cone, crossover, crossover. So they're doing two crossovers in the same spot where they're not moving. So they dribble up, crossover, crossover, dribble to the next cone, crossover, crossover, dribble to the last cone, crossover, crossover, and back. This is where it gets a little fun. Player three is going to do a spin move at each cone. I'm not expecting, obviously, a perfect spin move. If they carry it, it's not the end of the world. Um, spin moves are not easy, but we thought a spin move would be a little bit easier than some of the other dribblings. Um, so player three will do a spin move at each cone um, going down the court. Once they get to the baseline, player four will go down and do, they'll get to a cone and kind of do a hesitation. They'll get to a cone, take two dribbles backwards, push off, go to the next cone, two dribbles backwards go to the next cone, two dribbles backwards, go to the baseline. Does that make sense? So you're kind of doing a hesitation, but you're just taking two dribbles back instead. Um, player four will then cross the baseline. Once player four crosses the baseline, the player five will do a speed dribble down the court with their right hand. So they're not stopping at any of the cones doing moves. They're just speed dribbling down with their right hand, back with their left, and the time will stop when they cross the baseline um, on the op, on the side that they started with. That was a lot. Are there any questions or do you guys get that? Um, again, if they don't do the move properly, um, there's most likely going to be a point taken off. Spin move will be a little more lenient with if they carry it, it's not the end of the world, um, but they had to, so we'll say this, player three has to attempt a spin move at each cone, okay? If they don't do it 100% properly, as if they attempt it in the correct way, we'll give them the points um, with the crossovers and then the hesitation, they have to do those correctly or it doesn't count. 
Is that fair for, do you guys think your teams will be good with that? Like, are you good with that? Yes, okay. And that's it. That was the last one. So I know that was a lot. And I just went through that in an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna open it up to questions about anything that we went over. Are there any questions about anything? Yeah, not a question here, but again, I think, um, you know, I just want to give recognition to Melissa and her leadership with the sports management team to put these things together. And this is all a learning experience for all of us. So um, if you find some other tricks of the trade or other cool things that you think maybe could be incorporated, please share those with us. Uh, yes, please. This is, you know, a, a great uh, starting point and great diagrams and great exercises. And I think guys with experience in basketball and coaching, you've got it. Uh, I think the videos will also help out a lot. Um, once Melissa and St. Mary's is able to put those together. But, you know, as you go along with this, you know, the athletes, you're with them a lot. Um, if you come up with some other things that you think would either be uh, challenging at the different levels or to help strengthen their skill sets with the rebounding, passing, dribbling, cutting, footwork, whatever, Please share them with Melissa and uh, mm -hmm. look at to incorporating them in the future, et cetera. But, you know, I think um, during the pandemic situation we're in, this is a great job and a great opportunity to get the athletes engaged in the different phases. And as coaches, um, I know sometimes we get new coaches or whatever that I don't know what the drills to do. I don't, you know, I'm struggling. I always do the same drills. So this also gives you a great basis for drills moving forward. Um, um, as we hopefully get back soon to playing mode in the coming years. So, um, and I thank you guys as well. And I'm sure Melissa will address it at the end for taking the time to come and learn and, and work through this with us. So uh, that's my little spiel. Give you time, give you guys time to come up with other, other questions. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, like you said, if you guys have any questions or if you have any suggestions on something new or maybe, hey, my, I don't think the athletes are going to be able to do this kind of thing, um, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, the team skills, obviously, for level five aren't going to be done for a while. So if we need to make some changes now, this is the time to do it. Level three and four skills, they're set. Working on them this weekend, recording them. I should have those videos up hopefully next week. Um, because I love you guys so much, I'll work with during my time off. Um, but only for you, not for Steve. Um, so want to make sure, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions, comments, anything you guys have. You know, I'm always here for you um, in any way I can. The other thing I'd say is I know we said it at the beginning, but I also want to say it at the end is that um, this is being recorded. So we'll put this up, mm -hmm. which is resource page. And again, um, Melissa, if you want to do another plug for Facebook, um, other than Mr. Signer, um, those who want to uh, join on that and give a little explanation of what the purpose and how that got started would be great too. Yeah, so we created the Special Olympics Maryland Facebook page. I think we're up to 124 members, which is pretty cool. So if you have Facebook, make sure you join. It's just SOMD Basketball. If you search the groups, um, even if you don't have it, Bob, you can get your teammates and your partners and your athletes to join. Um, on there, I'm going to be posting workouts, um, paper workouts, where I just like write the workout in. We're going to have video workouts. I'm already working with uh, Kira from our communications department, um, where I met with two people from the assessment team. Emily, who I mentioned earlier, who played at UMBC for four years on a full scholarship, and Seth Henry. Um, who is from Harrow County, went to school at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh and played there um, and then came back and wanted to volunteer because he loved it so much there, um, came back to Maryland and joined us to help us as a volunteer, met with both of them a couple weeks ago. They created two workouts. I have a couple people from when I coached in Missouri who are going to do workouts for the athletes, working on different skills. Um, it's going to be video workouts where we recorded it and then we'll just post it for the athletes to do by themselves at home. Um, 
we're going to have links to sign up for Zoom, um, like in person, not in person, sorry, Zoom workouts um, where it's done live, which will be really cool. Um, all of them are basketball related, basketball specific workouts, um, but it'll be a lot of fun. I'll do some of the workouts, lead some of the workouts. I'll get other people to lead some. Emily's already thinking of different things to do for her workouts. Um, as well as a couple other people that I have coming on. I have a special video from um, a girl I used to play with who is now in the WNBA, where I'll post that on there, where she has some inspirational words for the athletes, which is really, really cool. She's from Baltimore. She knows the city. She knows the state. Um, and it's really cool. She's in the WNBA. She played in the championship this year. She's been on the Olympic team. Freaking amazing. Um, and then... I'm also going to be creating challenges on there as well. So it's like, I can make this many layups in a row. How many, I, I challenge Steve to try to beat my record, but they have to record themselves doing, showing that they made that many in a row and post it on the site. Um, they can post, athletes and partners can post on there, coaches can post on there. Um, showing themselves doing workouts, giving each other encouraging words and stuff like that. It's just a place where basketball athletes, coaches, partners can still come together, even though we're not going to be together, um, still talk to each other, still encourage each other, still show each other basketball stuff. I'll put some tips and videos and stuff like that up all the time, um, different drills and different things that they can work on. So it's going to be a place where they can come and just be immersed in basketball, um, get a bunch of workouts and stuff like that in. Um, for those that don't have uh, Facebook, I will be posting on the coaches resource page as well, who is which is open to everyone. Um, as long as they have internet access, anyone can get onto the coaches resource page. Athletes, partners, coaches, managers, whatever, can get onto the coaches resource page and I'll have all the workouts posted there as well um, so that they, so everyone can have access to them. So it's not just, um, the Facebook page. We want to make sure we include everyone into that. So I'll send out emails to you guys when I post something on the coaches resource page. So if you want to send it out to your team, you can. Um, we'll have the, the virtual training guide, which is in the um, editing stages now um, that we posted on there as well that you guys can do is the nine week uh, training guide with just ideas of what you can do during the nine weeks virtually um, you don't have to use that, uh, but if you want to, it's there for you. Lots of resources on there, different topics to talk about, stuff like that with your teams. Um, I know this season is going to be a lot different than what we're used to, um, but I can't thank you guys enough for being on here tonight and actually taking the time to be a part of this and still be a part of it, even though we're not playing games and things are a little bit more difficult than they usually are. Um, it may not be as fun, but it's an opportunity to still keep the athletes involved because not everyone has a family support system at home. Some, some of our athletes, Special Olympics is their family and their only social aspect. So having all these basketball opportunities and all these other sport opportunities and the virtual movement and everything keeps our athletes involved, keeps them in shape for when we can start back up again. Um, whenever that may be, hopefully soon, but we never know with what's going on. But thank you guys so much. Um, you guys are amazing. Really, really appreciate all that you're doing and being on here tonight. Um, hey, it's only an hour and a half instead of three hours, so that's good. Well, I got one or two more comments. So on the challenge on Facebook with the layups, um, I will be <laughs> Melissa Anger, just to cool. buy that. Um, but again, um, just so you guys know, the Facebook, any postings or any comments or whatever are monitored before they get um, approved to go up on Facebook. And again, this is a, a pilot program, if you will. Mm -hmm. We started one with powerlifting. So this is our first team sport Facebook page. So I think it's really great that we've got, what, 190 or something already signed up, something like that, Anger? Or 124. 124. So um, again, as Anger mentioned, you know, to have the social 
um, aspects there to have some camaraderie, to, to give an avenue for athletes to commute with each other, communicate with each other and talk with coaches and uh, provide that, that uh, level of engagement is important. So please pass that along. And similar with these programs and any, anything basketball related or otherwise, um, if you have some ideas for the Facebook, um, please let us know. Again, we're all in this together. It's learning as we go. So the more feedback and communication we can have, the better we'll all be for the athlete's sake. So um, that's my second ramble for the evening. Yeah, what, what, what's the Facebook page? Um, if you search SOMD basketball, it should come up. Um, and all the links that I've sent out the last couple of weeks, um, the link is in there as well. Okay. And you can just click on it, it goes straight to the page. All right, I'll, um, I'll if look you search it. SOMD basketball, it's there. Yeah, and Parents we'll can join too. Yeah, and we'll Thank definitely you. have to monitor anything that Tony posts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm because I'm gonna try to get my my players on. Oh, I found it. I found yeah. It. So if you invite the like your guys are young, Tony. So if your guys don't have it, but the parents do, they can join. Um, I'm the one that monitors and accepts and declines who joins. We only okay. declined one person. That's just Steve. So. Okay. Yep, I just sent the request. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't so, know if my team has Facebook, but I know a couple of parents. You have some young guys, so most likely the parents might. Yeah, the parents um, So do. the parents can be on there so that they can see it and they can post stuff on behalf of their child. Um, that's fine, too. We have a lot of parents that have already joined. Uh, yeah, all my kids are now in high school. Which is weird. Yeah, they're Because when I started, school. they were little. Well, no, now, I mean, they're probably... Well, last year I had three kids about six feet. So, so yeah, now now they're about regular height. Stormy's what about five two, five three. Wow. But all right. So if there's no more questions for these skills, um, I will say good night yep. and thank you guys again so much. If you have questions later on, just send me an email, um, and I am more than happy to answer anything. Tony, if you want to stay on, I can go over the. Um, level three skills for you, for your team. Uh, okay, that'll work. Thanks again, everyone. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Thanks. guys. Good night. Thank you, guys. Um, Anger, I'm going to step off of this, and if you want to stop the recording,